Welcome to Megamation Direct Line Training. This video will look at the work planning screen. To access the work planning screen, go to Module, Maintenance, Work Planning. The work planning screen can be used to create new work orders or to plan and modify existing work orders. To modify an existing work order, type the number in the work order number field, or if it is not available, click on the magnifying glass button to bring up the work order search. In the work order search window, enter one or multiple criteria to search by. If only part of the specific criteria is known, type the part that is known in the appropriate field, then click Starting With or Containing radio buttons on the right-hand side. Also, each field has a magnifying glass next to it, which, when clicked, will give you a list of values which are used on existing work orders. Choose one of those values and click OK. Search for work orders within a date range by entering dates in Completion Date, Labor Date, creation date or due date. After filling in the desired criteria, click OK to run the search. Choose the needed work order from the list that comes up by double clicking on it or single clicking and clicking OK. The work order is now ready for editing. If creating a new work order, upon opening the screen it automatically fills in the work order number. This is a sequential counter, so it always gives the next available work order number. Hit tab or enter to start entering a new work request. Note the new entry text in the title line. Some of the fields like submitted by, date, type, status, and a few more can be set to autofill. See the user management video for more details. Notice there are five fields with green backgrounds. These fields are mandatory and will have to be filled out before saving the work order. Navigating outside the work order number field fills in the status field with I for initiated, and the date field is filled in with the current date. The status and date can be changed by clicking the drop down on the respective fields. Fill in the type by clicking the drop down and choosing from the list of available work order types. Select an item from any drop down list simply double clicking on it or highlighting and clicking OK. The last green field to be filled in is submitted by. This field is a text field so a name can be typed in or you can choose from the employee list in the system by clicking the magnifying glass button and choosing from the list of employees. At this point all the information required to save the work order has been filled in. So for the rest of the fields, fill in what information is applicable to the current work order. Fill in the building by typing the building number, or if it's not known, click the drop-down arrow and choose a building from the list. Fill in the job type by clicking the drop-down and choosing from the list of available job repair types. Each work order needs to have a piece of equipment in order to charge labor and materials to it. Equipment can be anything entered in the equipment module, including buildings and rooms. Enter equipment by either typing the equipment number in the field or clicking the magnifying glass and using the equipment search window to find the needed equipment. The equipment search is the same one found in the equipment entry screen. Search for equipment by entering one or multiple criteria and clicking OK. A list will be displayed of equipment meeting the entered criteria. Select one equipment from the list by double-clicking on it, or add multiple pieces to the work order by single-clicking two or more, and then clicking OK. The work order description is a text field and can be filled with as much text as needed. Note that the work description field is text only and will not accept the pasting of pictures or spreadsheets. Fill in the assign to field by clicking the drop down arrow and choosing from the list of available assigned to codes. Keep in mind that your keep in mind that you're assigning Fill in the Assign To field by clicking the drop-down arrow and choosing from the list of available Assign To codes. Keep in mind that Assign To is used to assign the work order to a group, not to an individual. 
issue the work order to an individual by filling the issue to field with the employee number of the person who you want to issue, issue the work order to, or by clicking the drop down arrow and using the employee entry search to choose an employee. See the employee entry video for details on using the search. Set the priority by clicking the drop down and double clicking on the required selection in the list. When a priority is set, it automatically sets the due date of the work order according to the priority code. Priority codes can be modified, added, or removed from the administration menu. Next, select page 2 to plan labor and materials for the work order. Note that the information on page 2 is equipment specific, so if there are multiple pieces of equipment assigned to the work order, labor and materials will be entered for each piece. Switch between equipment by clicking the drop down menu at the top of the screen and single clicking on the equipment required. To add estimated labor, choose the trade which will be doing the work by clicking the drop down and double click the required trade in the available trades window. The function field is a text field used to enter a short description of what that particular trade will be doing on the work order. Next fill in the no number of persons field by simply typing the number of people of the chosen trade who will be required. And fill in the estimated hours by typing the number of hours the person or people of this trade will be required. To add a second trade entry, simply tab past the estimated hours field to start a second line and follow the same steps. Keep in mind that labor information filled out on page 2 of the work planning screen is an estimate only and not actually charged to the work order. To add estimated materials, type in the part number or click the magnifying glass to search for the required part in inventory. See the inventory module for video instructions on how to use the inventory detail search. If a part is chosen from inventory, If a part is chosen from inventory, the, the warehouse description, unit cost, and on-hand quantity are carried over from the inventory detail screen. Enter the quantity planned by typing the number of parts required for the work order. Keep in mind that material information filled out on page 2 of the work planning screen is an estimate only and not actually charged to the work order. Next, select page 3 to attach standard and safety procedure documents to the work order. See the standard and safety procedure module videos for instructions on how to create these documents. To attach a standard document, click on the drop down under standard procedure title and document number and choose from the list of standard documents by double-clicking on the required document. To attach a safety document, click on the drop-down in the docu document number field under Safety Procedure Title and double-click on the safety document you wish to attach. Next, go to page 4 to see a summary of labor and materials for this work order. Once all planning information has been entered, save the work order by clicking on the save icon in the taskbar 
or going to File, Save.